What's up, everybody? Happy Friday to you. Welcome to the family room. Yes, thanks for joining us today. Those of you that are starting to log on, it is great to see you. We know that it takes a few minutes, but we're glad that you still come back each and every Friday to be a part of our just, you know, discussion. It really is. It's really just been that. Yes. It's like every Friday we're having a discussion. We're not trying to preach and right. prophesy. Nothing wrong with those things. Right. But we just want to have discussion and interaction on topics that we normally don't get to interact on. Right. And so it's really become the only means for which there's interaction back and forth with the uh, with the members and people that choose to join with us. So uh, as you guys are coming in, Can you uh, your chair back a little bit? make sure that you hit us up. Let us know you're on. And um, we are looking yes. forward to what's going to happen today. Yeah. Can you sit beside me? Yeah, I'm sure I thought I was. <laughs> Am I sitting beside her? You, you were like you were working on it when I wasn't here with you. That's how you were still okay, okay. kind of set, okay. set up. That's why I always so, have you check it when you come in, though. See if we were right. I, I did. Sure. You told me to check the camera, so I just didn't know about. Okay, go ahead. Honey. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just here for the ride. I'm at this, she's point, throwing me off now. No, she's I'm here for the ride. Y'all go ahead and do what you do. <laughs> Hello, it's good to see you, Keisha. Hi, Connie. Hi, uh, Taiwan. It's great to see you too. Hey, what's up, Make everybody? Make sure you share and invite someone to be a part of the family room. Um, let them know a little bit about last week, what we showed for the family room. Um, yeah, last week, what did we show for the family <laughs> last It week was we from showed, the conference, remember? Yeah, we showed a video from the conference, uh, from Full Gospel Marriage and Family Conference that we did. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the, um, that was one of the learning labs that we did. And we just did That's a show, family. we called mm -hmm. it um, Get to Know the Ramses. Yeah, it was and a it was family about, room. Yeah, it was a family, family room, room. Mm -hmm. and it was really just about um, my wife and I and our kids um, our kids, who they are, what everybody's agendas are, all the things that we manage throughout the course of any given day. And you really got a chance to hear from them. So we thought that would be something that would be great in light of everything that was going on on last week. Mm -hmm. And um, from the sounds of it, I hope that everybody enjoyed it because we got some good viewership. Definitely have some good viewership. Thank you for logging in, everybody. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, Dee Dee, Lauren. Uh, hi, Monique. So glad that you guys have tuned in today. We got some more um, technology stuff going on here today. today. What's that big old? <laughs> what's that? See, I didn't say anything. Well, why we got to discuss it on air until though? Until we got live, I didn't say a word. She waited on me. I waited. What's that big old box behind the computer? Which box behind the computer? There's a big old box back oh, there with some a, stuff. Uh, what is that? We didn't have that before. <laughs> you gonna put my business on the like I, that? The, let me tell you the reason why I did it though. All of this is a charger. That's all it is. It's but, just, but we have plugs. With electricity. We got plugs, but the reason why is because one time we were doing a family room and one of those lights went out because I didn't have it all the way charged to go the full distance. So I said, well, let me make sure everything's charged. I just didn't get time to unplug it before we started. Amazon. Did you order from Amazon? Huh? Did you order from Amazon? <laughs> it's I played this the big. It's, I played this, the it's this big. Pastor needed a charger for one of the lights. No, no, but you I just told them. You but I got an ulterior for motive for that okay. for that uh, charger too. What's the, I know you have an ulterior motive, <laughs> so I'm just putting you in front of everyone oh. in the family room for us to have this conversation about him and his technology. I just was asking because I'm going with the flow. Gentlemen, just pray that just, your, just your woman doesn't Marvin you. and Marvin, don't you dare take your pastor side. Talk to me, Marvin. And Lauren, he don't need it. Marvin, talk to he me. Don't, he don't need it. He now, Lauren, it. it could be shoes. It could be shoes now. Um, it, um, your husband sets the standard for that. It could be shoes. And look at Tracy said, Amazon King. Yes, he I is. Am. Yes, he is. I am. I'm probably on the top five. You are. You are. So what are we going to talk about today, Pastor <laughs> It's <Ramsey>? funny. <laughs> Well, the subject doesn't fit. You just put me out on the street like that because we're going to talk about. <laughs> we're going to talk about what? We're going to talk about biblical stewardship <laughs> and long term family success. So that's a super long title, but I wanted to do it that way because I wanted kind of what we're going to talk about to be a part of, of what the actual statement is. And that's just biblical stewardship and family success yes long-term yes. planning look here they go here they come here go marvin leave my pastor alone thank you marvin and, and here go lord that's why i like you let pastor b 
be facing you after hear her. That's why I like. Say, See, if Ronjay yeah. wasn't working, he would give me yeah, love right now too. It be all right, y'all. If Ronjay was not working, he'd give me love. But I these are the that. same people. When we when we get in our seventies and eighties, I'm gonna be calling all of them for some money. <laughs> no, not for some money, but come get you. You don't order more stuff, and here we are in our retirement stage of life, and we always gonna work. I just so our again. retirement. Let me not say retirement because I don't see us ever retiring. Yeah, we're never gonna I see us going into a different, you know, season a different season. In life. That's it. That's and it. you will have us our own home studio. Technology. It's gonna be like Channel Eight up in that bedroom. I can tell you that now. It's gonna be, it's gonna be like Channel Eight. And so I'm gonna be like, okay, all of y'all that supported y'all pastor, <laughs> you come over here and help him work on this equipment. No, but they'll be happy because we can come on anytime we want you. I can come on all and right. we can, you know, share, talk, all that time. Okay, Lauren, just send Landon over. It's all good. Just send the kids Bring over. Bring them on over, Landon. We got you covered to help us out. So thank you for they joining. They ain't got but one. That's easy, right there. We bring them on. For now, over. we look up one day. They can have three or four. They could. Now you keep the other two, but just send them on over. And we got it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so Danica, good to see you. Hun, good to see you. Jackie, good to see you, Latoya. Tell my boy, little Jamarcus, I said hello. <laughs> he be loving his first lady. I bring him donuts over because uh, Latoya braided my hair for me. I was like, let me bring you some. Ah, uh, you be trying to, you be trying to, you just get your way on up in there. Yeah, I just have to get the little kids ready because they yeah. got to take care of me one day. Because you know, and Judah and Johnny, don't try to put me in the home. Um, <laughs> So our topic today is going to be about biblical stewardship. Make sure you share and invite somebody to be a part of the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so today's subject is biblical stewardship and long-term family success. Um, there is a statistic. I told this to one of my friends the other day. He just fell out laughing. Now, it may not be laugh funny to you guys, but this is a good statistic right here. That mm -hmm. if you don't save money, there's 100% chance that you won't have none. Well, that's a good way and to so, put That's a good way to put it. <laughs> it really is. There's a 100 percent chance. If you don't save money, that's a good. Yeah, way I didn't even to have to go to George Burner to get that stat right there. There's yes. a 100 percent chance that you won't have any. So we want to talk about this a little bit today. And instead of reading uh, the passage that I did, I did on uh, ministered on on Wednesday night. It's uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 28 through 30. Okay, let me put it in the thread for everyone. Oh, I got um, it. So, okay, well, slow you your roll and you put it in there. In, you want to put it in the Yes. Thread? Hello, Tyanne Thomas. She is um, logging on from D.C. Wonderful. From where, where is it? Right over there. But who can see it over there in the corner, babe? Somebody should be able to see it. No, nope, they see can't it? see it. Y'all can't see it? All right, don't worry uh -huh. about it. Right no, just, put it just put it over there. I can't me. move it. I can't move it right now. You, don't put, you put the white on top of the white. I know, but I can't move it right now. Oh, there it is. Look, there it popped up. Okay, see, y'all got you. it. Go ahead, got put, it. You there. Okay. put it on there. There it is. Lord have mercy. All right. So, hello, Siobhan. Good to see you. Good to see you today, Brandon Johnson. Good afternoon to you. All right. So, Pastor Ramsey, we are talking about biblical stewardship for long-term family success, and this could be single, mm -hmm. married. Family. Yes, absolutely for singles yeah. for everyone. Um, and basically. I want to just kind of start out by giving you a snapshot of what that passage and what that story is about. Uh, Jesus is given the parable and the parable basically says, uh, what man is there among you that when he goes to build a tower, he doesn't sit down first and count the cost to see if he has enough to finish it. If he doesn't, they say that people will begin to mock them saying that this poor man started, but wasn't able to finish. And what that, what that parable about, if we want to just kind of simplify it real quick, mm -hmm. I would say this, if I could give one statement to define that whole parable, it would say, uh, he is emphasizing the importance of financial due diligence before you buy something. Good. That's what he's saying. And so that's what this, this really, this whole setting, this whole backdrop really is all about. Um, so when we're talking about buying something, does it, is there a certain scale you're focusing on today? Because you know, the housing market is hot right now. It is yeah. booming. So are you talking about buying a home, buying a car, you know, buying a new television? What do people really have to make sure they focus on when it comes to a purchase? Is there a certain dollar amount? Yeah, I think anything that's going to affect the household budget. Okay. I think that if you're married, if you're single, you can make that choice. But if you're married, you definitely need to be in agreement about it. We typically have like a certain level. Mm -hmm. And if you can do it or whatever, or if I can do it over here or up yeah. to that certain level, we go ahead and pull the trigger because we're comfortable. It's not going to affect anything else. When yeah. it gets to a certain level, you and I talk about 
everything along those lines. Well, if they're single, how do they know if they should make the purchase or not? That's a great question. And I think that the answer to that is very simple, that you you get some financial accountability with a good friend, oh, that's good. someone that's disciplined in that area, someone that's having success in that area, or they're, they're very, very disciplined and skilled in what they do there. And just say, hey, can I bounce something off of you before yeah. I do this? Yeah. You know what was somebody shared something with me recently, but what was it was very insightful they took some financial advice from a person they were close to. Um, mm -hmm. And now that they look back on it, the financial advice they took was from a person who was working on restoring their credit. Yes. So their credit was fine, but uh -huh. they took the advice of this person said, we need to build credit. You need to do this. You need to do this. And they look back and it's like, well, they were trying to keep themselves out of, you know, mm -hmm. a situation where I never filed bankruptcy. I didn't have to do that. Yeah. I so mean, you, you really have to, cause there are people that would try to give you financial advice mm -hmm. that really aren't qualified. I give you some depth. You bring some stuff to the table. <laughs> I appreciate that. And, and you know, but here's, here's the simple key to that. Don't get advice from broke people well, they or people broke, though, that, yeah. that, uh, and I don't want to say that as a criticism, but I, yeah. I just want to say, um, the Bible says, uh, uh, it talks about us following faith, but it talks about it in the capacity of people that are, experiencing level of success with their faith. So okay. I would simply boil that down from a financial standpoint to this, get advice from people that if they're not solid in this area and progressive in this area, they're at least stable and making good moves in this area. That is good. That would be, you know, our son is 23 mm -hmm. and a lot of his, you know, friends or fraternity brothers are doing successful things, yeah. but he still comes to you for financial advice. Right. So that's, I think a lot of times this generation Z and the millennials, they get financial advice from each other. And the fact is they don't go to people that are seasoned in it. Great example. Um, yeah. I think that's so important. You know, let your friends be your friends, but never let your friends replace wisdom. That's good. And if God has given you parents that have wisdom, a pastor that has wisdom, leadership that has right. wisdom, someone around your the vicinity uh, of your life that you can pull on and ask them a question. I've got people that I ask questions to yes. um, as it relates yes. to this. You know, I got guys that can just do numbers in their head yes. and they're very, very strong in this area. So that's why I pull on if I'm not sure about a purchase or not sure about how to right. approach this. Right. When to make a move. When's the best time? You know, you may be an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and you want to expand your business or invest in your business. You know, a lot of times to become an entrepreneur, you have to invest money yeah. to get started. You know, talk to someone who has a business that has success in business exactly. to find out, is it OK to invest this fifteen hundred dollars? Should mm -hmm. I try to buy a new home now or should I try to build a new website right mm -hmm. now? Mm -hmm. Like those are some people who are doing well. Those are good questions for you. To I mean, ask. Babe, that's some incredible stuff you give. And that's just great, great wisdom. I'm glad I married you. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll keep you another 25 years. But um, um, it's great information that she's bringing to the table because. Yeah. You know, when you look at it, there are so many people, like she said, that want to offer advice, but maybe they're not in the best position to do that. Yes. But here's something that I want to encourage you to do, maybe even before you go and seek out all that advice. Mm -hmm. Read. Read books. <laughs> okay, so what books should they read? Um, let me give you one. Um, uh, Dave Ramsey um, is my cousin um, out of Nashville. <laughs> I'm joking, but uh, he has a book called The Total Money Makeover. I'll put that in here. Okay. Total Money Makeover is a great book. Um he also has a small book that I would recommend to anybody that wants to start making positive steps. It's called the money answer book. You don't mm -hmm. even hear them advertise it very much. It's about this thin. It's only about that big. And it has one question at the top of each page. And the answer is on that one page right there. What's the name of that one? I'm going to put that it's one It's called here the, money, the money answer book. Okay. And why should they read this book? They should read it because knowledge is power. The Bible says, now think about this. God said, my people are perishing because of a lack of knowledge. So let's take that into different areas and segments of our life. Is it possible that we're perishing because we lack financial knowledge, because we lacked uh, stewardship knowledge, because we lacked um, you know, self-discipline in a particular area? So knowledge is power, um, but the right knowledge is even more power. It definitely is. And one thing that with it being the family room that pastor and I can share 
with you here as opposed to what we don't do over the pulpit is he and I from he, he had a plan mm -hmm. of how he wanted to grow our family financially and being wise stewards and living a debt free life and how we would work together. In addition to that, we always believed in um, additional streams. Yeah. Of income. Of income. Mm -hmm. So we've always so together, you and I, we established JNA. What year was that? Um about um about 18 years ago. 18 years ago. Mm -hmm. 18 years ago. So we established JNA uh 18 years ago, mm -hmm. knowing that we wanted to have other streams of revenue and mm -hmm. using our own money right. to invest in launching that business. Mm -hmm. And as you see, we don't talk about it over the pulpit. We no. don't talk about it over this the This is the first church. time we really brought it this up. This is the first time we ever yeah. brought it up. But I think sometimes, you know, we're shifting to a season where a lot of people want to launch in their own business and they want to do right. additional things. And you can do those things without it being your sole, you know, mm -hmm. focus. And you yeah. and I have done that for many, many years. Yeah, I, great point. I think that one of the first things that people need to understand is that you need to get stable at one thing before you try to develop two things. That's um, good. Paul said this one thing I do. He didn't say these 20 things. Good. And so it's critical that you get stable in one thing, that you develop um, you know, a fundamental level of success and stability in one thing. Mm -hmm. Your number one money-making tool is your income. So if all of your income goes to bills, you can't build income. And what is their income? Their their main your your, your salary, whatever you make at your job. Your main job that you so, have, your career. So if I'm living from paycheck to paycheck, mm -hmm. every two weeks I'm blowing the opportunity to try to advance myself because my number one uh, money making tool is going to be my income. Now, if mm -hmm. that income is freed up, or let's say I only use half of that income towards my bills right. and then I pay my tithes, all that type of thing. And only half of it is gone. Right. Well, guess what? I can save a third of that, a fourth of that. Right. And the other fourth could be going into an account that I'm going to get my business license. When I get my ideals together, yes. that I'm going to get a computer or a piece of software and little things that I might need. Yes. I'm setting that aside in an account that I can do that so I can do it properly. Because the reality is if the government ever came in and raided a lot of these individual businesses that people have on the side, mm -hmm. about 60% of them, in my opinion, would be closed immediately because they're not keeping track of their paperwork and things of that nature. Your business license got to be renewed every year. Yes. And it's, it can be a process. Take your time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Pastor and I are financially stable. We use good stewardship. He has um, JR Ministries, which we've had for many, many years. Um, I am just now launching AR Consulting. Mm -hmm. And with AR Consulting, I'm taking my time with mm -hmm. each little piece. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I applied for the LLC. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm doing research on this, you know, the, the website, the, all mm -hmm. the things that I'm going to need to launch the business. You know, some people will take five grand, you know, all their mm -hmm. money and dump it in yeah. and they haven't done each step and then talking to people like mm -hmm. yourself and others along the way on what piece do I need next? Okay. Let me, how much is that going to cost? Right. You know, how much money can I invest in that at this time? Exactly. And then part of what AR is going to do is going to be consulting, but it's going to be consulting in a multitude of areas. It's going to yeah. be consulting in education when she goes and does workshops for principals and all kinds of things in school systems, there'll be individual coaching and every, item that she'll make available will have a price tag to it. So yeah. before she rolls it out, she's getting all of her prices together. This is what this is going to cost a customer. This is what this is going to cost a customer. And so that is exactly what the scripture is talking about. Yeah. Um, sitting down first and counting the costs to see if I can not only start it, but can I finish it? And how well you can do it. I remember yeah. one of the conversations is like, well, you're doing a good job. You thought out this process. You have your stuff in order. Uh, they were talking about, you don't know how many people come and say, I want to start a business. And they haven't done any of their due diligence. None. There's no plan. There's no business plan. Mm -hmm. um, they want to go back to school to get this certification and, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to do this or that with their business. And they don't have a plan of how is it going to be paid for <laughs> those yeah. type of things, because you're big on being able to pay for the education that you go get. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, I'm really big on that. You know, and she's working on her doctorate mm -hmm. and behind the scenes, we're putting together a plan as to yes. how we're going to attack it mm -hmm. once she's finished with that. 
So we're not 70 years old and paying on the doctorate and those kinds right. of things, but we're going to look at that strategically. Okay. What do you think? How do you feel about it? You want to come at it this way. You want to come right. at it that way, right. but it's not going to be a ball and chain around her neck for the first five years. And then you start building the business. So be, you have because, to sacrifice some and you're doing that, Yeah. but we got a plan for that sacrifice. Yeah. Because at first we were going to try to hit it the way we did the masters yeah. and just pay for it mm -hmm. along the way. And then we realized that wasn't the best financial investment right. at mm -hmm. that time. So mm -hmm. even before you take out a school loan, you got to, especially if you're married, have that discussion with your spouse. Is this the best way for us to go? Yeah. You know, um, do we pay for it class for class? Do we get a loan for it? Like, how are you going to make it happen? Yeah, it's amazing how many spouses, as well as even how many single mothers or single fathers, you know, get up one day and say, I'm going back to school. Okay, well, that's a great goal. Mm -hmm. And we're not throwing any water on that goal. Right. But before you start declaring it to everybody, do the homework on it. Okay, what does going back to school mean? Do, can I afford um, Indiana University? Can I afford um, Regis University? Can I afford, or do I need to go to IUPUI, or do I need to go to online class and get a certification in something? Then build some money, then try to get uh, the bachelor's because I'm halfway there. So there's a lot of different ways that you can go at it, but one of the statistics that I gave on Wednesday night that uh, was really concerning to me, and that is this, I mean, I know you knew this, but it's, um, of all the young people that go off to college, only 52% of the, of the young people that go off to college graduate. That means 48% of young people that decide to drop out of college, flunk out, whatever their scenario might be, when they leave college, they're leaving without a degree, but college loans. Wow. That is a that is a ball and chain that you've got to try to start your life with. For sure. Marvin has this to say. He says, I have a small part-time job and get an early retirement benefit from social security. I would love to save my part-time check, but it's always something comes up. I need help and discipline on um, what I can do. Yeah. I, to me, it sounds like you just need a budget. You just need a budget because when you have a, but when you say something always comes up, that's really what happens to us, Marvin. That happens to all of us. If we don't have a budget, a written budget that we follow every single week, that is what happened. Well, this came up and I was going to do this, but this happened and this happened. But when you have a budget that is realistic yeah. and that you are functioning off of every week, get, get one of those apps. Dave Ramsey has a free app that you can get. Put, all you do is put your numbers in it. Anytime one of those areas in your budget changes, you change that number. It automatically adjusts all the other numbers. So really, it's, it's, um, it's no excuse for us to not start moving forward because there's a lot of tools out there that are free yes. and we just have to implement those. And in the beginning, budgets can hurt and be very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I was talking to someone recently and they said, well, I can't do this. I can't do this. I said, I know because you want that degree. Right. So guess what? You can't do the vacations right now. Right. You can't do those things yeah. that you want to do right now because it is a temporary sacrifice for an eternal gain. Exactly. And that's the problem. The mm -hmm. problem is people, dog. people want to Sorry, Bishop, dog. Bishop is trying to get on. Dog. The, Go. the problem is, is that people are trying to accomplish a goal. Yes. Without ever really setting out a plan for that goal. That's very, very good. And, and, and that is what is, that really is dangerous because it's kind of like you're stepping out on water. You're stepping out um, on this ideal yes. with nothing to back it up. Yes. You That's haven't good. done the planning. And even with our children, we do that. Yes. How many of us have children that when they become seniors, you're talking to them all year about where do they want to go to college? Well, really, sometimes our conversation needs to be altered a little bit. Sometimes right. it right. can't be about where they want to go to college. It, right. It's got to be about where they can afford to go to college. Right. Like if the parent can't pay for it or, you know, pay for half and the kid is able to get half of it in a scholarship or whatever, right. we got to come up with a plan because that kid has got to estimate what it's going to cost to get that degree. What if you get the degree, what is your job going to pay you? And based on what your job is going to pay you, how many years is it going to take you to pay off that school loan? Yeah, absolutely. And we do it. We do it for everything. We do it for everything. You know, that's why it's not hard for us. It's just built in. Yeah. Judah was talking about her, her, her friends going to one particular camp. And I thought about it. I was like, 
no, nah, we got some other stuff we trying to do this year. Right. So mommy will send you to this camp mm -hmm. and let you have this opportunity. But I didn't tell her, but I was like, I wasn't, I'm not, we're not doing that right mm -hmm. now. Right. Um, because I understand and pastor understands that if there's a goal he and I have, like literally mm -hmm. our whole, we go towards that goal. We grind. I take this financial responsibility. He takes this financial responsibility. Mm -hmm. Like we tag team it yes. to where we know the results we want to see. Yeah. So I don't look at him paying for everything. He doesn't look at, she got to give me some money for this. He knows, okay, my wife has this part. I know he got that part because we know what the result is going to bring when we both tackle it at the same time. But let me also say something about that. <laughs> What husbands and wives can't afford to do is fight over how much you have to spend versus what they have to spend. Right. It's all the same pot. Right. It's all the same home. It's all the same family. It's all the same marriage. Right. So it's not about equal. Right. It's just about sacrificing right. and everybody playing a role. I think that's kind of what you say, equal sacrifice. Yeah, not about equal giving, it's equal, equal sacrifice. Side. And I, I truly believe that you and I are about equal sacrifice. And no matter who is in in charge of doing what mm -hmm. i i truly believe that if, if i couldn't work anymore you would definitely carry the load mm -hmm. and i believe that you feel like if for some reason you couldn't work you know that my wife would carry the load we both mm -hmm. have that agreement with each other that mm -hmm. no matter what we're going to take care of each other and in relate and that's what we say in dating relationships mm -hmm. you worry about the superficial things instead of will they take care of each other yeah yeah. Will you take care of me? I will take care of you. We really have to get people to learn to focus on that. Absolutely. And let me just share with you guys just a little bit of um, advice I gave uh, John Jr. Because he, um, praise God, he he got accepted. He got his uh, first job offer mm -hmm. and accepted that. And he'll start a full-time job in education in August. Mm -hmm. And he knows what his salary is going to be. He'll have his own health insurance and life insurance and all of that. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things that he and I talked about when we were one-on-one -on -one, was um, the week that you go in to sign all of your papers, stop by the HR office and tell them you want to max out your 401k every two weeks. As much as you can put in there that comes directly from your check, mm -hmm. you want it to be automatic and you want to max it. I said, if you do that at that age, mm -hmm. by the time you're 40 or so, there's a real good chance you could have a million dollars in a retirement account because mm -hmm. you started that early. So that's the power of compound interest when you start early. Good. We have some good questions here. Okay? Mm -hmm. First go. one is from Folo. Hello, Pastor and First Lady in New Life. Can you please explain how to strike a balance between sacrificial giving and having to maintain a budget? Thank you. Um, sacrificial giving begins with just obeying God and the fundamentals, which is my time. That's non-negotiable in, in, in our conviction as believers. It's non-negotiable that God's going to get 10% of our income every time we get paid. Right. In addition to that, the scripture says the offering, that's already non-negotiable. So what we do, what I try to encourage people to do is you pay God, you pay yourself, and then you pay your bills. Example, if I can give the kingdom 10% of my income, then why not come back and try to save 10% of the income and then start working towards the bill and see where that gets me. Um, but again, I also want to say this, that if you have a budget, you'll know exactly where your money's going and, and bills won't be able to catch you by surprise very often because here's what the budget is doing. When you don't have a budget, but you keep talking finances, you still can't talk it with accuracy mm -hmm. because a budget tells your money where to go instead of wonder where it went. And that is so important. You're giving your dollars an assignment. That's all you're doing with the budget. Mm -hmm. And there are so many people that just won't do that. And when they do, they see how much easier it is for them to plan everything. He has, and they have a budget. That's mm -hmm. great. And they have okay, a budget. Okay, good, good. This is, and then um, I'm going to help you see where Pastor and I, how we got through understanding sacrificial giving as a couple. Uh -huh. um, you know, there'll be times we will go to conferences, we will go to places and how do you know how much to sacrifice? To okay, get? I got you. I got you. So, you know, we budget. Mm -hmm. We don't play with our budget, you. especially early on. So God may speak to him to give a hundred dollars. Right. And I'm thinking on the budget, like, where's that hundred dollars gonna come from? Because we're budgeting. Mm -hmm. How do you know then okay. what to Okay, give? I got a better understand. Thank you so much. I'm yeah. sorry I didn't get all of that question, but um I think a classic example of a sacrificial giving 
let's say you were preparing, setting some money aside to go get a bike. That's your thing. You want to get out and exercise this summer and everything else. Maybe that bike's going to cost a thousand dollars, but you're in a service or you're watching the ministry and God tells you to get 500. Well, then sacrificial giving might be that I get one half of that and I give that other five. Right. And that's what he's saying to me. That's sacrificial. Sacrificial means that you're giving up something to give this amount. Yes, because I know you may have heard full of different situations where people don't pay their mortgage mm. and put in an offering. Right. No, that's right. not what um, uh, pastor uh, teaches. And that's not what we believe. <laughs> Two concepts, I believe, as it relates to that. <laughs> That there are a lot of people, you know, if 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 someone said, "Hey, I'm asking everybody," if the pastor said, "If I stood up and say I want everybody to give a thousand dollars," we're trying to accomplish X, Y, and Z. If if we have fifty percent of the members do that, we'll be able to accomplish that. Now, if you don't have a thousand dollars, God's not talking to you. Right. Okay. He's not going to ask you for what you don't have, and that's why I always say to people that some people, when it comes to offerings and sacrificial giving, they don't need to pray for God to give it to them. They need to just have trust to release it. Yes. Yes. Because their issue is not, can they do it? Yes. But faith to release it versus clinging to it as if it's never going to come back again. Absolutely. That's good. Marvin has a question. What do you mean about equal sacrifice? When I said equal sacrifice regarding pastor mm -hmm. and I, Marvin, um, pastor makes, you know, more money than I do. Um, but we look at it as all of ours. I do. I do not feel as if he works harder than I do. He doesn't feel as if I work harder than he does. Mm -hmm. We both have equal sacrifice in this marriage and in raising these children mm -hmm. and um, in providing for our household. Now, there are some relationships he and I have seen people literally look at the dollar amount mm -hmm. like, well, this is how much he puts in. This is how much she puts in. Well, I put more money in. I have more say so. Exactly. That's not equal. That sacrifice. And that has never been a deal at our house. That no. that just doesn't work. There are bills. I don't go to her and say, hey, this is the biggest bill of the house. Right. And I've been covering this for 15 years. Right. You need to do that. We don't do that right. because right. it's not about that. Whatever's being done is benefiting both parties as well as our children. So right. there are things that I never have to worry about. I don't right. know how much we spend on groceries. I don't know right. how much gets spent on certain there things certain because things, there are certain right. things that she just takes care of. Right. And then there are some other things, major and minor, that she will never have to know what that bill even is because I get it handled. Right. But we do know and we both know as far as as we're getting more seasoned in life, we discuss more about things that we need, that we don't need, how we're going to add it to it. And um, let me go ahead. There was a time in there was a time in our relationship where Pastor took a significant um, we left one um, season and we went to another. He went mm -hmm. to another uh, career, actually mm -hmm. another job. Significant less salary yeah. at that point. But we didn't miss a beat we because a beat. when he took the decrease, God gave me an increase. It all went to the same kitty. All went to the same kitty. It yeah. all went to the same kitty. And to the fact that we never missed a beat. You know, mm -hmm. we had the health insurance. We had everything that we needed. We both knew that it was equal sacrifice. Yeah. For us. Yeah. And even now, you know, I mean, um, you know, the average job, you can go back in every year and wonder what your raise and things are going to be. I could do that if we wanted to do that, if I wanted to sit down with the board and everything else. But I haven't looked at a raise in in years. I mean, I don't even know how many years, 15, whatever. But um, but we don't skip a beat because we do what we do. We try to do it together. We try to make sure that God's being honored and that each of us are being honored. Right. We um, know how the, we know how the word works. We know what mm -hmm. God is. And then we know the importance of stewardship right now at this season in our lives. Mm -hmm. Like we we're at halftime. I look at it. You yeah. know, we're at halftime. Mm -hmm. And so now what are we going to do for the third and fourth quarter? Yeah. Of our lives. And you and I talk about it all the time. So right. okay, that same intensity and that grind. See, you and I have a hard time for lazy people. Mm -hmm. You know, you're married in your 20s and 30s. It's about the grind. Then, yeah. yes, it's, a, it's about the grind. It is about that. And, you you know, I think one of the keys to, I told my son this, one of the keys to knowing that you have the right spouse is when you have someone that will grind just as hard as you do. Because even though you both have different roles, if you don't have somebody that will put as much sweat equity into the marriage, the family, the finances as as you do your best to, it's going to be very difficult 
to make it because after all, one person is going to start feeling like they do all the giving, nobody else helps. Right. And, and that's right. when relationships get in trouble really fast. We don't have to make the same salaries, but we will grind just as hard. Right. And it all benefits one pot. Now, one of the things I also think we need to throw out here, and we've done this before, is the fact that even though we got a system of how we do our money, at any point in time, 24 hours a day, she can go app on the phone, I can go to the app, App, or we can both go to the computer and you can pull up where every dime went. Right. And that's what we're saying. And, and we know, you know, he may be the one that is the electric bill, but I know the scope of the electric bill, mm -hmm. the scope of how much Wi Fi is. That's the thing that I think people really need to understand is when you are a team, right. when the two become one, it's even when I talk about equal sacrifice. Okay. Let me, let me give you this even. Mm -hmm. um, for Marvin, okay. If there was a time where I was not working full time, I was working part time. Mm -hmm. And when I was working part time, because I was not working full time and he was carrying a lot of the load at that time, I said to myself that I'm going to make sure this house is taken care of. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm not worried about him coming home, cleaning the toilet, cleaning this or cleaning that. Not saying he couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. But at that time, he took on an extra load mm -hmm. so that we, we functioned off of one, you know, salary. We saved my part time salary. Mm -hmm. We lived off of his salary and I made sure it was equal sacrifice. So he was working longer hours, doing more, putting more time. And we were on the road traveling. Mm -hmm. So he was preaching on, you know, different places and pastor in the church. Like, so equal sacrifice. So the sacrifice I made was to make sure that I handled this part and he handled this part. And I always honored that. He always honored that. He always honored that. And then like, I think it's also a lot of financial stability has to do with planning ahead. Yes. Um, it's always planning ahead. Example, like we knew we were going to be locked down in this house and maybe in our offices and at church from time to time over the last 13 months. Mm -hmm. So that means that there were no vacations. That means that there weren't going to be any flights, any hotels or anything like that. So what, what did we do? We got one account that Every time we got something extra, bam, 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 bam. A couple of weeks ago, we started talking about vacation, and she, and she was like, you know, um, what do you think about this? Oh, we can do that. That's in there. That's right. ready. But then I still kept asking, it, don't we got some freeze nights somewhere? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> she did. She did. And we do. I, did. I was like, shoot, don't we got some? Freeze and we do. Nights? And we do. We but do but too. but that's all of that. Pre I don't want to take a vacation, and then come back. And I'm paying on it for a year. No, he knows. When I come back, I'm yes. paying towards the next one no, in a savings stay, account. We'd rather stay home. We're not going to mm -hmm. go in debt to go on a vacation. Shay has a question. Can you touch on stock investments? Is it considered good stewardship to invest or is it considered a gamble? No, it's, it's good stewardship to invest, in my opinion. But there's a 60-40 rule. Um, investors talk about a 60-40 rule, which means that the money should be broken up between 60% stock and 40% bonds. Bonds, you can't lose money with bonds, but yet they make less money. But what bonds do is they also balance out the risk of the stocks that the 60% is in. So it's important that you talk to people on your job. And what I say to people is this, you know what the best plans are? Um, financial long-term uh, retirements are the ones you understand. That's good. The best plans are the ones that you understand. So. You can go to your bank. I don't have to turn into, I mean, we got people that do that, but I still know about stocks and bonds and all that type of thing, but that's not really the thing I spend a lot of time on because I'm paying this dude to do that. So what we do is we watch the people that watch our money. There it is. And I read up on that stuff. And every year he flies in town, we sit down, we go over every dime. Okay, how come this didn't make that? Okay, where's this gonna be? All right, now give me my five-year projections, give me my 10-year projections. And every we, year and we've just said we're going to even change the way that meeting yeah. goes because when that meeting goes our attorney is going to be there so that you got the will and trust and all that mixed in there everybody knows how everything works if something were to happen to me or something were to happen to her then um there's not going to be a lot of confusion and chaos let me tell you something with this pandemic if you didn't learn anything else especially in our community know that you have life insurance yes you have it how does it work? Mm -hmm. How do you contact to receive your mm -hmm. benefits? 
What does a funeral cost? Mm -hmm. Can you start prepaying on it? Mm -hmm. Do you have plots? Does your mother or dad already have their plot paid for? You better start having those conversations. Right. And those are things that are very important. Uh, you know, one of the things that we're going to make sure uh, we're going to we're tying one more bowl around this change in our in our will. But then after that, one of the things that we're going to look at doing here in the next year or so is um, I mean, it sounds a little bit morbid. But if something were to happen to both of us, I don't want my kids going and trying to figure out what color casket daddy wants. I don't think that should be their their job. We want to do the best we can to uh, for them to be able to call a particular place and tell them to pull the file. Um, um, I just feel like if you're going to live right, then you need to die right. And part of dying right is with the right pieces in place to make sure that the family can move forward with as minimal amount of chaos as possible. Minimal, it is difficult. And have the conversations with your parents um, or your guardians or your grandparents. So, you know, it, it makes a difference. I, you know, just like you and I, uh, we've been through so many situations here where it's that time. And, mm -hmm. I, and I remember when my grandmother was transitioning literally and they were in the room, I was on the phone cause I was here there was no concern about her funeral. It was mm -hmm. already paid for. Yeah, Everything was picked out. Everything was done. Everything they knew was where done. the paperwork was. They knew who to talk to. And, you know, this, my grandmother, you know, was in her 90s. Mm -hmm. But all this had already been done. Yeah. And it does take that pressure off. Didn't she do hers about 20 years ago? Uh, it had been a long yeah. time ago. Like she bought years. her plot next to, you know, granddad you know, was buried. And it, a lot of people think that that's not, you know, see, to yeah. me, her grandmother mm -hmm. and her father proved that they loved their family when they died yeah. because of how they left their family. Yeah. Does your family know where everything is? I can't tell you how many times people say to me things like, well, you know, if my grandmother died. I'm over everything. Well, have you read the will? No, yeah. she didn't give it to me. Well, how did you know what you over? You might be over bills. That's it. So I would not take the responsibility or even verbally commit to anything when I have not read everything and know what I'm over. Right. Uh, Lauren says, yes, and please keep your beneficiaries updated. We understand that. And it is a difficult conversation, but to be a wise steward, you need to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, when we, my mother, when we were asking her about when it was time to bury my father about the plots and she said, well, we didn't do that. I said, mom, I've been having this conversation with you for years. I, I just knew you bought the plots. When we went to go buy the plot for my father, She's sitting with me. I said, well, we need two. And she's like, I said, mom, we're going to buy yours now. Mm -hmm. So then that's not, we don't have to worry about that. That don't need to be on the people you she love. Did, she didn't want to do it. She mm -hmm. didn't want to have the conversation, but we are adamant. No, we're going to buy it now mm -hmm. because that is what you and I work so hard for is yeah. this stewardship and this financial planning. And even if you think that you don't have much, and you say, that's what my mother said yeah. uh, about 15 years right. ago. I said, mom, I'm gonna have the attorney come out of the house and do a, a, a simple will for you. She said, I don't have anything much. Mm -hmm. And I said, you don't have to have anything. I said, sometimes it's not so much about what you're gonna leave because that may not be the case there with you, right. but it's about what you want right. so that I don't have to fight your children over what you <laughs> wanted to do. So I gotta mourn you, fight them and try to pull all this stuff off. So. You just save the people behind a lot of unnecessary conversations and arguments and potential arguments um, by having everything in order that you can. It is. Um, Danica says this. Ooh, I don't like having those conversations, but Keith and I have them because I will not leave my kids to try and figure things out on their own. Mm -hmm. uh, Shay says this. I work a state and you would be surprised at how many people are left in the dark. Mm -hmm. So common. There are people that that have gone to meet with a lawyer after their spouse died only to find out that the spouse left the money some other woman. Are you sitting up there looking all cute and don't know nothing? Could you imagine? Man, please. Somebody could going to the hospital. That's could all you I know. imagine? Somebody going could to the hospital. Could you imagine? That could is all imagine? I know. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Ooh. But one thing about, I was thinking about that, um, when it comes to our financial stewardship, we do not touch the savings account. Mm. You know, we save, we save, we save, but I have access to it, you have <laughs> access to it, but we don't touch it. We don't touch it. Mm. We don't touch the vacation account. We don't touch the 529. Like we don't touch it. And that's the discipline mm -hmm. people have to pray for. And you know what? I think I'm glad you mentioned the 529 because 
Some people ask me from time to time, Pastor, what should I get? I got three children. Should I get a 529 for all three of them? And I said, it only depends on if you have the money to put into all three. If you if you don't have like an abundance of money that you can be stacking all three at the same time, Mm -hmm. just do one. Like Mm -hmm. John is so much older than Judah is that when we got Judah, we started doubling up on the deposits in his 529 because now that he graduated, we changed the beneficiary to Judah's name. Yes. That leftover money becomes her money, and we keep giving to it until she's ready to go off to college. Yes. You have to have these conversations. You can never talk too much about money or finances. Never. Never. Continue never. to have the conversation. If you haven't read Pastor's book, Smart Money Management, get that book. I think you can get it on Amazon, I believe. It, it is an easy read. Mm-hmm. You can it's implement quick it right away. Those principles are very important and life changing. And I'm an example. Like I see the fruit of it in our life. Mm -hmm. He lives it. He just doesn't preach about it and talk about it. He lives it. Mm -hmm. He has the last name Ramsey for a reason. Mm -hmm. God has really empowered him in that area. And not only does he read it and study and talk about it, but he is good at explaining it to others on Mm -hmm. how to do it. Because so many people say, well, I want to do these things. I don't know how. Mm -hmm. You just told him do the work. Yeah, study, work. read, and, and that's the thing. And and I'm, I want to just get back on this one more time. Um, uh, and that is this: please don't take the lazy way out of trying to acquire knowledge in the area of finances. Read, read, because um, that knowledge is so much power. You know how I found out what a special need trust is? I found it out. I think the year that Jeremiah was born, because I read Money Magazine every month. Every month I had a subscription to it when it came or when you and I had to go somewhere out of town, you would grab your magazines. I would grab mine. Mine is usually going to be a car magazine and then a money magazine. And that's what I'm going to read on the way there. Mm -hmm. I'm reading through there and I saw this special need trust. That's where I learned about it. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we came back and began to pursue that and put pieces together for Jeremiah. So yeah, and even that was complicated. So it, we had yeah, to start even talking that, to people. You know, I of, read about it, but yeah. I, we still had to have her break it down for us. And get a because there are different one. types of special needs trust. Yes, because we had the wrong, it was just yeah. a lot. Yeah. Monique says this, you know, her and Joey have the three little boys. She says, we just talked about the 529 last week and about having one instead of three. Smart. Very Be- smart. Because I'd rather put $30 in one than yeah. $10 in each of them. Yeah. We have one five twenty nine, mm-hmm. but Johnny had a savings account. Judah has a savings account, and Jeremiah has an account. Mm-hmm. Jeremiah had to have an account for his social security and all of that to mm-hmm. be worked out. But they're separate things, so your kids can have savings accounts and then have that. You got Johnny um, a high school debit card when he was like sixteen to start helping him understand how. So he turned sixteen. He had a debit card, yes. and we didn't let him touch credit until this past year, um, um, helped him get a credit card with a $500 limit on it. That's right. And to they, start building his credit. Yeah, to start, but what we also did is two years ago, we took his cell phone out of our name, put it in his name, had him put it in his name. And, um, and just the fact that he's been paying on that consistently for two years means that he's building credit. And, and the thing is I love about him is he allows you to walk him through the process. Mm-hmm. Like he's been trained. He was funny at the car. He, yeah, he was trained that I am not going to drown in debt. Mm-hmm. I do not want to drown in debt. I'm not going to drown in debt. Yeah. Let me listen to my family um, on how this process can be done. Right. In my life, he wants the fruit and the results. And I think I got enough cachet to say that as it relates to this area. I've watched financial stress take years off of people's lives mm-hmm. and contribute to killing them. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't afford to do this paycheck to paycheck thing indefinitely. Right. 78% of people in the United States live from paycheck to paycheck. That is, that is unbelievable. Is. So if you're making, it really doesn't matter what you're making. You can make making 30,000 or 60,000 a year. You're living from paycheck to paycheck, which means that your whole life is a crap game. Is you're rolling dice Sounds every good. two weeks because you're spending up everything that you get. And then there are, and for God's sake, don't ever cash out a retirement account. Don't ever. I, after 35 years of doing this kind of stuff, I have never seen somebody cash out their retirement and catch it up ever in my life. And people will do it for anything. Well, if I got emergency saving of three months worth of my income, I don't need to even be tempted to do that. 
I go and I use that. And then I start trying to save that back into that account to get it to that three months worth of income so that my family can breathe. You talked about it last week. <laughs> Waiting to exhale is real big in the area of money, too. Yes, because it's it's just something for our community. I just really see um, you tell us all the time we buy our wants and beg our needs. Mm -hmm. And we do it and we don't stop. And then that cycle of dysfunction continues. So yeah. our, our parents were like that. And then we become that way. Then our children become that way. And it's yeah. time to change. And I think it's also important that we all mature. Um, and here's what I mean by mature. Mm -hmm. So many people see what somebody else have. You don't have to be a kid to fall to peer pressure. Right. You see what somebody else have and you want it. I can't tell you how many times I've written in somebody's Bentley or Rolls Royce or mm -hmm. whatever it was. Not once as I ever came home and said, you know what? I want a Rolls. Those are incredible cars now. It's just not me. Not once as I ever came back and said, I want a Bentley. It's just not me. It's a wonderful car. Drives well, all that. I've driven them before, but I don't want one. That's just not for me. So my point is so many adults have this perspective that you feel that you got to have what other people have. And you don't know how them other people are even paying for it. They when I just said, live in your lane and do what you got to do to maximize your resources, not wonder how much somebody else has. Right. And know that it's such a piece. Someone asked me about I said, my truck is like a 2014, 2013, mm -hmm. and it's paid off. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, We I'm gonna roll it until it can't roll. It's getting kind of it's getting there where it don't want to roll. Yeah, I've been, I've been driving the last <laughs> Wait, four months. It's kind of getting there where it's I've been to the up. shop with it for a it, couple of it, times. It's been acting up. <laughs> But I'm like, that, you know, I'm cool. I think I think it has high blood pressure, but I'm trying but to just, just walk it through. just the fact that there's no payment, you know, it just drives smoother. Yeah. You know, have you ever driven a car? You know, we've been driving cars with no payments. There's something about driving a car with no yeah. payment. And, and, you know, and that, that brings me to something because yeah. how many people in our country are pre-programmed to think that when a car is paid off, you go get a new one? I don't know. It's <laughs> almost like they built into their mindset. If they had half of the money, that they spent in cars over the years in a savings so account, true. they probably could retire at 55. So true. And there's just so many more things that you desire out of life that you can have. But um, you teach it all the time. Can God trust you with the blessing? Can exactly. he trust you with the increase? Yeah. As you were teaching us earlier and, and answering Folo's questions, you know, we pay God, you know, our tithe mm -hmm. and, and our offering, and then we save and yeah. we pay our bills. We pay our like can God trust you with the increase because he knows you're going to do the right thing with it? Exactly. You know, when you get your, if you're not a good saver, if you don't have much saved, at least save your tax returns every year. At least save your stimulus check um, um, when they, when the government was giving them money. Yes. At least save that. If you save that, you could have five grand in the savings account somewhere and be able to breathe and then start working towards whatever things you need or want or what you're trying to get. Yeah, Lord, they said that tax date is coming up, that extension. It was on the news this morning. Yeah, yeah. And the thing about it is, <laughs> the thing about it is, is that um, free rides are usually not free. Mm -hmm. you, you have to be very careful how you go about doing things. But I just think that, you know, we have too many opportunities in our life. Yes. Think about your, your grandparents, okay? I guarantee you, you make four times more than your grandfather made or your grandmother made. And how much do you have to show for? It? Oh, that is so good. How much you get? How much you get in the bank? That is so good. And it, when I tell you it is possible, I look at you know my grandparents. My grandmother didn't work. My grandfather worked. Six kids, and mm -hmm. when he died, he left her. Their house was paid off. He handled his business. It house was paid off. My grandmother mm -hmm. only had to pay the taxes, That's and it. she was she was good. She mm -hmm. was living very well until the day she died, and it. And that's what the goal has always been. And that was been. way back that then. Was way Your grandfather was born in what year then. approximately? So I don't know. Yeah, he, I mean, Every way day, back I then. Find how Buster is but a theologian. No, no yeah. college education. Right. But he had a mindset. He was in politics. He was in a little bit of everything. He, he bought worked real estate. Chemical, hard shot chemical. All yeah. those, all those kinds of things. And yeah. what he did is he maximized his opportunity, and that's the key. To becoming financially stable right no matter who you are no matter how much you make stop using what you make as a cop-out for not saving you just have to live and whatever you make live beneath your means yes. and you'll always be able to make it yes what's that scripture it says proverbs 13 11. it says um uh, it's in king james it says this way wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished in other words um, another translation said, wealth gained hurriedly dwindles, 
but he that gathereth by labor increases it. That so, is good. So stop looking for get rich quick schemes and lottery tickets and all of those kinds of things. I mean, do what you're gonna yes. do, but but at the end of the day, we still got to come back to scripture. And he says, labor is what increases your revenue. Labor shall increase. That's a good place to drop the mic. Absolutely. But he that gathereth by labor shall increase. Shall increase. Your work. Many of you are at work right now, and you are going to be blessed because you are hard workers and mm -hmm. you honor yeah. God with your tithe and your offering. And I'm just blessed that we have a church that they not only you know want to be filled with the Holy Ghost and slain in the spirit and shout. Mm -hmm. No, these people want to live debt free. They, they want, want marriages that yeah. are according to yeah. the Bible. Been, like they want to do. And it's possible to not live debt free, but to live very stable. Maybe you get everything paid off but your house. Yeah. And so you're able to comfortably pay for that every month and then live the life that you want to be able to live. But also think about it from this perspective. Yes. You want to have more because you also want to give more. Yes. You know, um, I don't want to just pray for other people's needs. I want to be the answer to some of them. Yes. And and we can all do that from time to time yes. when we just do the right things with our resources. Absolutely. Well, it's been a good family room. We talked about Very so good. much. We yeah. always do well when we have the conversation about finances. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. But before Pastor closes us out today, I want to invite you to be a part of our birthday celebration for Pastor John F. Ramsey Sr. This Sunday, the nine o'clock and the 12 noon, we have Bishop Daryl Brister that will be joining us from New Orleans, Louisiana. He is the second presiding bishop in the Full Gospel Fellowship um, Conference. And it is just amazing that God has shown us such favor and shown you such favor in that fellowship already. But this is our first time having yes. Bishop Brister with us. And what a day to celebrate. Wear your jerseys, New Life. Even if you are watching virtually and you haven't selected a spot to come, because the last I heard, there are about 20 spots left in the nine o'clock, 12 o'clock is full. Let's pack it out. You wear your jerseys, wear your New Life here at home, wear it if you're coming to service. Then mm -hmm. in between service, we're going to celebrate our relationship with Pastor Ramsey and we're going to have parking lot church. We're going to have the speakers going. You can watch the 12 o'clock on your phone, bring mm -hmm. cards, you know, bring gifts, whatever you would like to bless pastor with on that day. Let us celebrate the man of God. And I'm going to be walking out there speaking to everybody and just thanking you for coming and being a part. Yes. You know, this is a time in um, our nation that we have to be creative in how we do ministry. I do want to yes. tell you this. I wasn't done yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, man. I'm sorry. I wasn't even done yet. I'm sorry. I just had, I was, I had some on my head. I, I know, go. but what I was telling you. We want you to be there and be a part. Even if it rains on that day, we're still going to have still the parking have. lot. But this is important. You have to remember today at five o'clock, the link closes. If you want to be a part of the parking lot celebration, we have refreshments that we're going to give out on that day and we need a number. So make sure that you understand today is the last day by five o'clock that you can click and sign up to be a part. Even if it rains, we're still going to have that on the parking lot. We want you to be a part. You do not have to be a member of New Life Worship Center. We would love to have you as a member, but you do not have to be a member, but we still need you to register. Go to Planning Center. It is an app. You click, be a part on that day. Okay, Pastor Ramsey, I'm finished. I forgot what I, I'm just joking. I didn't forget. <laughs> but listen, I also wanted to say this too. As we expand the numbers for people to attend service, y'all come on back to the house. You guys have that... That, uh, Pause for a second. Can you put your cash app? Someone just asked me. For oh, your the cash, cash app. Yes. Where is it at? Uh, right there. I've seen it right there underneath text. Again. Oh, that's it. I'm sorry. Yes. There it is. Um, yeah. So um, as we expand the numbers, the amount of people that can be in service, let's max that amount every week. Every time there's an increase in that, um, let's max it out. Get back in the house. Um, I'm just going to be very, very honest with you. Yeah. I'm not political. I don't have a dog in the fight. But for God's sake, get your get your vaccination um, and protect yourself as much as you possibly can. Let's try to get back to the, the quicker you do that, the more we can get back to some normalcy. So we just want to see you fill the house back up again as we extend the amount of people that can be in yeah. services. And, and if people would understand the the vaccination does not keep you from getting COVID, mm -hmm. but it will keep you from ending up in the hospital or possibly dying from the disease. Yeah. 
And we know people that are still battling it. We still know situations that are going on that we are praying and covering in every Jesus week. name every week. Mm -hmm. So do your due diligence, talk to your physician, do your research, but just don't say, I don't want it. Do that for all of us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then also the last thing I want you to do, the last two things I want you to do is one is support the family room today in JRM Ministries. You can do that by texting to give. You can do that by using the cash app. And um, the last thing I want you to do is to go to um, my YouTube page and put comments in there of subjects today that will help you. If you got a spouse that you will be helpful for you guys, whether it's parenting or whatever, put some ideals in there and some subjects that you really feel that can benefit you guys as we continue to deal with different topics every week. And awesome. We'll, we'll go back and read that. Awesome. Do you feel older since you had a birthday? Do you feel more seasoned? Do you yeah, feel but once you get over 50, it's just kind of like it, it, it's it's another year. So um, my biggest thing is that, you know, just enjoying. I want to guess that I enjoy <laughs> one and then and I will enjoy Bishop Brister and then enjoy my time with my family and then church family. I mean, if, if there's anything that makes me feel great on birthdays and that's when you guys show up and come to church and Amen. to and just be there sometimes it's not about well i can only do this i can sometimes yeah. it's just about being there yes who made sure that you got a guest that you would enjoy uh that would be you you look at my eyes <laughs> trying to avoid an argument let me go and give her credit <laughs> Well, as we close out in prayer today, if you have a prayer request or someone in your family, you yourself need prayer, please drop it there in the thread as Pastor prepares a prayer of us. Do not forget to register to be a part of the birthday celebration. If you would like to bless Pastor, we have his cash app right there on the screen. But we just thank God for you continuously mm -hmm. being a part of the family room. And we love how connected you are to the vision of JR ministry. So yeah. remember, if you have a prayer request, drop it right there in the thread, drop the name of the individual in the thread mm -hmm. and pastor's going to close this out in prayer. All right. Thank you. Uh, thanks again for being a part of family room. You guys are what makes the family room special. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus name, we thank you for those that have been a part of the family room today and those that will watch this over the next few days and even the coming weeks. And I pray that their life will be blessed, enriched and improved as a result of the information that they've received today. Yes. Uh, let this weekend be incredible. Uh, just to see the people on the parking lot and their yes, faces God. again, God is just, yes, man, that's a gift within itself. So bless them, God. Keep us all safe. Keep us all healthy. If, if any of our uh, members have any anyone that's struggling with COVID, yes, anyone that they know that's covering with, with COVID, struggling with COVID, I just plead the blood of Jesus over them. And we believe you for total turnaround yes, and God. divine health to be restored to them completely. Yes, with no symptoms, with no challenges afterwards, God, yes, because you're the giver of life. We trust you for this prayer. Now, God, we give you praise for these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. We love you all. Thanks for joining us. Peace. We'll talk to you soon.